hello there. Welcome to my channel. No, I'm not making tutorials, but I wish I could be. <laughs> my name is Corinne. I'm so glad you stopped by. This is a fun and creative look I created for you today. And if you would like to know how I achieved it, stay tuned. All right, so let's get started. So I've got my little trusty mirror here. First, I have gone in and primed the eyelid with my Beauty Blender using the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear More Than Concealer. It's a really good dupe for the Tarte Shape Tape, in my opinion. However, it is not as moisturizing or conditioning to the skin as the Tarte Shape Tape is. Um, I hope that they will look at their formulation and change it a little bit so that it'll add a little bit more uh, conditioning to the skin but it's great. I can't use it as a concealer under the eyes though because it really enhances my fine lines and especially the bagging. I don't want this area to be too, too light because I risk that indent showing up even more. And when I smile and laugh throughout the day, I really am very expressive in the eyes and my skin is not as taut and toned as it once was. And because of that, it tends to accumulate in the creases and uh, it just emphasizes that whole mess going on there. So I don't use concealer in my under eyes for that reason. Instead, I put a very thin layer and include or build my foundation upward so that it just very faintly covers the eyelid. Now that I have uh, gone in and stippled on just a little bit of that to create a great foundation for my eyeshadow application, I'm now going to try doing this look. I've never done it before, so we shall see exactly what this is going to look like on me. <laughs> but I'm kind of just feeling like playing around today and beauty should be fun. It's okay if we don't get it right, as long as we're doing our best. So with the uh, Farah brush in number 35E, if you are interested, I will place uh, links to all of the products that are included or used in my video below so that you can also look at them if you are interested. So I'm going to go in with a transition color and for that I'm going to use this really cheap palette that I have that has so many colors in it but the color payoff on the pigments is pretty good. It's by Beauty Treats. Uh, Rose All Day is the name of this palette. Like I said they were super super cheap. I picked them up over at I think Marshalls or Winners and um, yeah they've been pretty useful for applying eyeshadow. I have some protrusion happening here where the bone starts to come outward and then I have a deeper eye socket. So my eyes, my eyes are fairly deep set. And I have a little bit of, because I've put on some weight, I've got a little bit of fat pocket that's built up here. So typically you want to create, have this part of your face come out to emphasize the eyes. And typically, you want to have those areas really light. But what I'm going to try to do today is create a more medium color in there uh, with the purple. And we'll see how that goes. So I've dipped in and I'm going to start applying this right where the eye socket, the eyeball in the socket is, just at the crease, a little slightly above it. And this is just to create some tone and shadow. It's called a transition color and it helps create a more gradient effect between more starkly colored pigments and the brow bone. The same thing for this eye. Now because I've, I shot a tutorial yesterday on a different look, which I may or may not decide to post to my channel. I'm really not sure at this point what I'm going to do because I'm having a heck of a time editing it. Because what happened is it shot too long. It was like an hour and a half. And I don't know if you guys want to be exhausted for an hour and a half listening to me. Okay, so now I've gone in and sufficiently created a transition tone in my on my eyelid. I'm going to go in with this Wet n Wild brush, just a, those white brushes you get from Wet n Wild. I don't know, I, I have no idea where I picked it up, I don't remember. I want to make it, I believe it's called a uh, Halo Eye. So I want to have my dark color here 
dark color there and then have this really bright golden color here. So I've decided that I want to go in with a purple and gold look on my eye. So before I do that though, I need to just create a slight bit more transition on the outer corner of the eye. So this is a darker taupey brown from the same palette as before. I'm going to just tap that brush in there very lightly. Then I'm going to start applying that just to the outer V of the eye. And I'm not going to go ham with it. This is really just about creating some depth at that part of my eye. Now because my eyes already have a tendency to kind of angle downward, um, and they've been, always been that way, it's not just aging that's creating that issue for me, I like to make sure that my eyeshadows, when I'm applying them on the top lid, will always be just from where my eyelid ends and connects to my lower eyelid upward towards the point of the brow. I don't like to go much beyond that because if I am going to use this space at all, it's going to be for a wing if I'm going to do a liquid eyeliner look. Uh, which I don't think will be the issue today. So we're just going to blend this out. And tap into that again. And on this side we're going to do the same thing. Now I'm more or less doing a semicircular motion here. I'm really just creating almost like a round spot on that area where my brow bone protrudes. And the dark color helps to de-emphasize that meaty part of the flesh on the eye because I do have uh, some, some, you know, skin creping happening there, as you can see. I'm sure you can see that as I'm applying it. And, you know, we don't need help to get the skin to crepe more. Um, be really gentle when you're applying. Make sure that your... Um, Eyelid is very well moisturized or conditioned before you go ahead and put on eyeshadow. Some eyeshadows as well, the, the powder in them, can, the pigments themselves can be very drying to the skin. So you want to make sure that you use a nice buttery, rich, well pigmented eyeshadow. Uh, ideally, you can also use one that is like a cream eyeshadow. Those can be used on an older aging eye. Uh, but you know you need you need to have a really good primer that's not going to be too emollient. So now I want to go in and just do something with the under eye. I don't want to put too too much shadow on it, but I can still pull off some pretty, um, you know, I guess you would I don't know if you would call it vampy looks. Um, so. I'm just going to take, this is just a flat brush and it's by, again by e.l.f. It's an eyeshadow brush. I'm just going to take this and very, very lightly take that darker brown. Now my eyes, because they're so round and almond shaped, they tend to round out right here. And I don't like the look. I prefer a very swept up kind of catty a looking eye so this Cleopatra kind of look if you will I really really like that look so for me I will take that part that starts to go upward and instead of like following the lower lid with my eyeshadow I will actually pull out with like a straight line joining that up so you see there's a slight gap between my upper V crease and and the lower lid this is just how I do it and that's because of my own eye shape. So you're going to deposit the most color on this part. You're going to just use the residual product towards the center of the eye. And you know, it never fails. I seem to always be getting one eye a little bit darker than the other. So I'm gonna go back in. Put a little bit more pigment on this one because I'm seeing that I missed a spot. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I really never realized how long it takes to shoot a makeup tutorial and I was just stunned at how much footage I had and I thought, oh my goodness, I can't do this. Like what, I'm not gonna put out a video that's gonna be that long. Am I crazy? Okay, so I think that works. Now, I'm very pale, so I need to frame my eye. I can't just have this white lid and then black eyelashes and it won't look right. So what I do instead is I go ahead and put eyeliner on the waterline and a little bit more on the upper lid and I'll show you how. And the eyeliner I'm using today is by Maybelline, New York. It's called a Lasting Drama Waterproof Gel Pencil. It's pretty good. I did have one request, or I did, I shouldn't say it was a request, but rather a statement. Um, Stacy, you were saying, if you end up watching this, you were saying, I can't do eyeliner. And if I can add some helpful tips regarding eyeliner. Number one, waterproof eyeliners, while they're often an attractive idea, are often not the best to start learning with. They're not extremely emollient, they have a tendency to grab, and they make it really difficult to apply onto the eyelid. Um, because of that, I don't recommend them for people who are just starting to get good with eyeliner. Get yourself a really good emollient type of eyeliner formulation. So this Maybelline Lasting Drama, for instance, is not bad. Um, I really recommend the uh, LA Girl Glide On Gel Liner fantastic and you can pick them up in most department stores at a very very good price Ex extremely economically priced so I'm gonna go in I've done the water line on the top I don't do anything on the bottom with that black pencil not at this point and then I'm going to just fill in a little bit of the rim of my upper eyelid I went a little lower than I wanted to on that one because, again, you're going to draw the eye down. And I just made a boo boo. That's okay. We'll fix that. And I'm just creating like a little extended wing. So, the magic of having a very emollient, glide on, super blendable eyeliner. <coughs> Is that you can now go in with a smudging brush and you can smudge that eyeliner out so that you don't have this harsh edge and it also will help create this slight cat wing here at the end if you have a sharp enough smudging brush and I do okay let's hope that's not fuzzy because if it is I'll cry Sorry guys, my my battery died. <laughs> Half an hour time shoots only and then my battery dies. I'm telling you, I'm learning as I go. There's so much to learn in this whole content creator process and bear with me as I try and figure it all out. So, like I was saying, I am going in with the Nomad Nordic Lights Intense Eyeshadow. I'm going to just pack some onto the brush, tap off the excess so I don't get fallout. Then I'm going to go in, now normally I don't go in with a dark, but I thought I would try this because you know, I think if a dark helps recede something, then why not have it recede this I guess you could call it a fat pocket that I get on my eyelid. I call it a fat pocket because I've noticed that when I lose weight or I'm not feeling bloated, those tend to go away. I'm very gently applying that pigment to the inside of the eye and I'm drawing it up slightly so that it kind of comes into the rest of the shadow. So that is the first eye. And then we're gonna go in and do the same thing for the other. I 
can't tell you how many videos I've had to shoot in order to get this thing going. It's been crazy. I am learning so much though through all of the frustration. I am learning a great deal about video editing. I'm trying to develop my own workflow around how I create my videos, which is in itself a daunting task because you have to have a system in place if you're going to do this often. And I intend to do this often. I want this channel to be all about what you want to learn and also about fun. I want to have fun. I don't have a place that I can play. And for me, this is important, you know. So this is slightly metallic, you can see. I don't know if you can see that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right up here. Right where the wing, the black wing from my eyeliner connects to the bigger part of the brow bone. And the trick for this is don't put too much pigment on your brush. Just gently kiss it with a touch of purple. Tap off any excess and go in and just add a little bit of that purple tone. And this is kind of my version of what these beautiful younger beauty gurus on YouTube whom I admire and adore so much have been doing and I copy you guys all the time by the way I'm like the mom copying all you young beautiful makeup artists and I'm trying to create looks that'll work for my age group because obviously my eyes aren't this gorgeous skin like they have so I try and emulate what they do but with my own slant on it my own flavor and hopefully this works out and doesn't look too bad this one here looks a little And again, this is a gradient you're creating. It is just shadow. It's not a glop of color. You're just creating a slight, slight hint of purple. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, you see that the, the line that I've created underneath in the bottom eyelid is, you know, it's a good thick line. But what I want to do is soften the edge of that line. So I'm just going to very lightly buff out. This is just buffing out and adding just a little kiss of purple to the bottom edge of that line. And this is probably not the right brush to do it with. As a matter of fact, I may switch the brush up. I want to do it with a brush that's going to at least buff though because if it doesn't, I'm going to end up with an even harsher line. And I don't want that. I'm going to use this one instead. So going into that Nomad palette and very carefully blurring out that brown line okay I think that works just trying to get rid of any fallout I may have had we are going to deposit gold in the center just to give a little pop of highlight off the eye and to do that I'm going to use this brush which I'll wipe off in a second here because I used it for another color this week and I think this is a Wet n Wild, I think it's a lip brush. It's a good packer. It's a synthetic flat brush. I'm going to use that and I'm going to go into this palette and you'll see that I've got a gold here. Oh, you can't see because I've got you guys zoomed in. I've got a gold right here. Now I've never tried it. I don't have a clue. I would like to see something really bright, but I'm going to take it easy at first because I don't want it to look too crazy. So I'm just going to very lightly apply some of that gold onto the brush. And then you see the area where I've missed shadow? You see that high point there? I'm going to just pack that gold on right there. I am packing on some gold. Now a lot of times they'll do the halo effect and they'll put it just in the center and I'm going to just add a little bit more of that gold right inside that spot where they say you should never ever ever put <laughs> okay something I should probably disclaim and explain here I have some crepiness that is starting on my eyelids I've always had a crepier eyelid I guess. And some people are I think have crepier eyelids just by nature. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to do with aging. 
you know, you can try it and see if it works for you. What you could do instead uh, as an alternative is you could use a matte, a really light beige matte shade instead and just make that area light in color. Same thing, no difference. In fact, you can do this look with all matte shades with no metallics at all in them. And that would equally be cool. So try it out and let me know if you did try it out. And if you did, what, what was the result? I'd love to know. I love hearing your feedback, what you guys want to see, what you're excited about, what kinds of things you're trying. And are you one to experiment with makeup? Do you like experimenting with makeup? I do, I love it. So I'm gonna go in and just maybe add a little bit more purple to where I put a little bit too much gold there on that one part of the eye. I'm going to just add a little bit. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to put a little pop of gold right in the center of the bottom of my eyelid. This will just give a little bit of light to the eye and just tie the whole look together too. Ooh, I just got major fallout. Not good. Nothing a beauty blender can fix. I love this thing. It is fantastic. You need to have one. And that's the official beauty blender, by the way. I got that over at Sephora. So now I'm going to go in with a mascara. I got another little sample from Nomad. And this one here is the Illuminating or Illuminated Highlights Powder. And I am going to just put that on the interior of the eye just to give it some light. Now, I have a very movable skin on the interior of my eyes, like throughout the day when I'm talking and stuff. The, this part of my eye moves a lot, I'm guessing, because it'll really crease up like anything liquid or, you know, if I try and put liquid liner there or anything, it just makes a bloody mess. So, but these highlighting powders seem to stay on okay. And they still produce the same same effect. So I'm just going to put that in there and I'm going to bleed that into the purple Nomad pigment so that they kind of gradate. And for even more fun, let's put that right here. It's good to me. What do you think, guys? So far, so good? How did my hair go so flat? So now I'm going to go in and put my mascara on. And then we're going to apply false eyelashes. And I like Rimmel London. I think they're fantastic product line. They've been a good competitor with higher end brands. They, you know, they're very economically priced. It's hit and miss. Some of their stuff is meh, not so great. But they do have some really good stuff that I haven't even begun to exhaust their product line to see exactly what the quality of it is. And All right, so I've got my base mascara applied. Now I'm going to apply my false eyelashes. I am wearing Sweet Pea by Sephora House of Lashes Collection. Houseofelashes.com has these. They're really nice. I think they're pretty sparse looking, but they are good for just really a kind of a natural glam lash. I have really straight hair and very fine hair, so they fit nicely with my own natural lashes. They kind of look more like an extension for me. The only issue I have with them is they're a tad straighter than I would like them to be. So an important adhesive, someone did ask me about does uh, applying false lashes, actually it was Diane. Diane, you asked me, is it going to damage your own natural lashes if you apply false eyelashes? And the answer is yes and no. Yes, it can be very damaging if you apply too much adhesive and when you apply the lash to your eye, you will have seepage of the adhesive into your natural lash line. So when you go to remove them at night, if it is not a good quality adhesive that has a rubbery kind of consistency that mixes with your body heat over time, you won't be able to just, you know, pull that gently away and have it remove itself naturally. It'll pull the eyelashes with it. However, if you have a really good adhesive, and it is soft enough that it'll allow you to move that around and get it out from between your own eyelashes. You should be fine. Um, you will get some fallout. I always have like one or two that get pulled out, usually on average when I'm taking them out. 
and that's just because of sloppy adhesive application that's nothing to do with the adhesive itself the one that I use and I recommend very strongly is uh, by Duola, uh, Duo brush on adhesive with vitamins in it infused and the adhesive does soften over time so as your it, the adhesion is fantastic they'll stay on all day so don't worry about that however at night when you want to remove them your own body heat and the oils from your eyes will naturally help that adhesive just to pull away so that you're not going to run into a problem with pulling out your own lashes too when you apply your adhesive you want to just very gently apply it onto the band I'll show you how much is usually a good sorry my camera died guys so this is a good amount to apply onto the false lash one thing I recommend for people who are struggling with learning how to apply false eyelashes is one of these tools you can pick these up over at almost any drugstore the reason I say it's important to have one is because it's going to make it so much easier as you can see I can just hold it like this and you can also let it dry one of the most important things I think about the frustration around learning how to apply false eyelashes is two things the fit are they too long for your lid and if they are only trim the outside edge of it never the inside it can destroy the shaping of the lash that was done during manufacturing that's number one number two make sure your adhesive is a good adhesive good quality adhesive and make sure that you've allowed it sufficient time to dry before you apply it above your own natural lash line the reason is if you leave it too wet you'll start putting that on and it may or may not depending on how quickly that adhesive dries it may or may not go on for you but what you want is to be able to park it into one position and then move it around and, and get it into place without um, it's sliding all over the place when it slides all over the place is the problem and then it tends to you know you get one end going up one end going down and it ends up looking really silly and I have a really a fairly large eye so I can wear without trimming almost all of the eyelash brands uh, however there are some that I've noticed uh, do need to be trimmed and and um, let me know if you're interested in another video about false eyelash application and I'll do my best to be able to help you with that so I'm going to go in and I'm going to just apply to the outer corner first is how I do it you gotta make sure this tool is clean too because if you have any adhesive on it it may stick then because that adhesive is already partially dry and it's just tacky now when I planted that corner in where I want it it stayed there the rest of it's just hanging there it's not even applied to anything yet and it takes a while to dry so you don't have to panic then bring it up above your natural lashes and gently coax it into position now this tool helps you to grab and press and get it where you want it your fingers probably won't be able to do that you're gonna have a real hard time seeing what's going on you're not gonna know where on earth the lash is you're gonna miss a spot I have a hard time myself so if I have a hard time and I apply these daily I can only imagine how difficult it would be for someone beginning with false eyelashes so definitely invest in, what do we call this? Oh, I gotta find a name for this. False eyelash applicator. Is it possible that's what it's called? If you know what it's called, please comment, let me know. So now I'm just applying some more adhesive. And once again, going to snatch it up with my eyelash adhesive application tool. <laughs> and I'm going to just let it dry. This content was 
non-copyrighted. <laughs> Gotta be so careful what you put on YouTube, you know? Gotta respect those artists. So now I believe we are where we need to be when it comes to this eyelash and I believe we're dry enough now. It can take a minute. It's so dry in my home that I'm not having too hard a time with that. And once again, this one here, I find it easier to just park it right where it needs to be. Oh yeah, I say that. I have adhesive on this eyelash applicator tool. False eyelash applicator tool. Dang it! <laughs> okay, because I had some, it was sticking to the lash. So make sure your false eyelash applicator tool is very clean before you proceed to apply your false eyelash. My favorite are band lashes. There's a lot, a lot, a lot. There's um, Lashify, which I'd love to try. I don't know what those would be like. Um, Lashify brand. There's the magnetic lashes now. There are the individual lashes, which I used to wear a long time ago. Like, they're always falling out though. And they would rip out my own lashes, so I didn't like that. And, you know, oh, whack it. If you guys know there's more types of lashes, let me know. I always want to try things. Unfortunately for me, it's an affordability issue right now, so I'm kind of working on that. I'm going to put just a little bit more blush on because honestly, I find that I look a little bit pale. And this is the Wet n Wild blush in color icon I think is no 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 sorry called pearlescent pink pearlescent pink it's a very peachy tone but it's pretty it's got just a slight metallic sheen to it but it's pretty and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to apply a little bit of highlighter and the highlighter I'm going to use is the Nomad that I was using earlier for the interior of my eye space. And we're just going to pop that there. Swing. And I'll put that just at the cheekbone. And the schnoz, because I need to emphasize how large and protruding my schnoz is. And then very, very, very little mission. And then, just a little bit. Right, y'all. How about let's do a little bit more? <laughs> I'm addicted, sorry. My name's Karen and I'm addicted to highlighter. It's been 24 hours since my last highlighting. <laughs> Voila! There you go. What do you think? Works for me. I don't think this is too crazy, so I will go out today in this. It's been a lot of fun doing this with you today. I hope you've enjoyed it. My very first ever makeup tutorial and I hope that you uh, can return again soon. As a matter of fact, if it's your first time visiting here and if you haven't already, I encourage you to subscribe by clicking that red button below. Also, if you want to be notified every time a new video from my channel is up, please click the bell icon. And if you've gotten any value today or enjoyed watching my video and being with me, please click the like button. I do appreciate your feedback. Have yourselves a fantastic day. I send you love and hugs. Bye now. No, Corinne, that's not what I wanted to say. Nope, that's not it. God dang it. Good enough, you know what I'm saying?
Dental work. 